god power just spoke to me loud and clear, and there's no mistaking it. It's telling me to keep on pushing even higher! It wasn't too long ago that we finally learned about Yamoshi, the legendary Super Saiyan whose spirit still wanders the living world in hopes of finding a new savior, the Super Saiyan God. In this video, we explore Yamoshi's story. If you enjoy the art in this video, be sure to watch it to the end because I will tell you guys how to get some of it for free. That said, Let's begin the story. Born amongst a race of bloodthirsty Saiyans, Yamoshi knew his people were destined for more. Hoping to ignite change himself, Yamoshi and five of his comrades started a rebellion, but they failed. However, in the same way death has never been enough to stop Goku, death is only a speed bump in Yamoshi's plan. Yamoshi's story began a thousand years ago when he discovered something remarkable, a new path to a Saiyan's true power. Power and status were two of the most important things to Saiyans, and Yamoshi became obsessed with showing that there was a different path to these goals. All the Saiyans knew were rage, ruthlessness, and that the moonlight could significantly raise their battle power. However, Yamoshi's discovery revealed another path, and as it turns out, the current way of thinking only scratched the surface of what Saiyans are actually capable of. A Saiyan who had a righteous heart and a selfless way of thinking tend to produce more of what Yamoshi called S-cells within their bodies. These cells were at the core of a Saiyan's true power and with enough S-cells, the Saiyan race could go from being a savage, violent group to a people renowned for both their immense power and intelligence. A Saiyan fueled by S-cells could wield supernatural powers beyond that which any Saiyan had ever imagined and far beyond the current power levels. With enough of these cells unique to the Saiyan race, Yamoshi discovered that all Saiyans could become Super Saiyans. But Yamoshi's findings didn't stop there. He learned that there are beings that existed in the universe beyond mortals, like gods and angels. These beings wielded powers even stronger than regular ki, which the Saiyans had. These beings had divine ki. Yamoshi wondered how the unique properties of S-cells would react if they were ever introduced to divine ki. He thought that with enough energy from six Super Saiyans, while in the presence of Divine Ki, members of the Saiyan race could ascend even beyond the Super Saiyan. They could reach a power that rivaled the gods themselves and become a Super Saiyan God. Excited to share his findings with the leaders of his race, Yamoshi and five of his closest friends began a campaign to spread the word about this path to true power. Yamoshi slowly began to realize that his words were falling on deaf ears, stuck in the ways of old. The leaders of his race were not accepting of his findings. Not only that, they saw it as a threat, as teachings of the weak that would demotivate and weaken their soldiers and completely destroy the thing Saiyans valued the most, power. Because of this, the Saiyan leaders collectively decided that Yamoshi and his comrades would be executed. But not just a normal execution. They needed to be destroyed in a display of true power to crush all further talk of righteous hearts and S-cells, Yamoshi was quickly cornered by these leaders. He attempted to make a deal so that the lives of his comrades would be spared instead of his. Instead of this deal, what Yamoshi was offered was a front row seat in front of an army of Saiyans to watch each of his helpless comrades fall one by one. With every death, he could feel his control slipping. Yamoshi was losing his mind. The guilt was too much. It was because of him that these innocent people were dying. This has to stop. Tell them to stop. Yamoshi remembered feeling the faint sensation of a tingling in his back. But at that point, he was too far gone to remember if it was a battle wound or not. An uncontrollable key erupted from inside him. He remembers some of the soldiers trying to restrain him, yelling something about yellow hair, but they were down before their words could register. He remembered thinking, in the end, I wasn't any different from them. Faint thoughts as he tore through what seemed like hundreds of soldiers. The same people he wanted to save, the same people he wanted to help ascend to new heights. He couldn't do this anymore. With thoughts of his comrades, with thoughts of his hypocrisy, he allowed his key to fade, and in moments, he watched as members of his race rushed him 
ever too eager to end his life. He remembered opening his eyes completely free of pain, almost as if waking up from a night's sleep. But how could this be? I shouldn't be here, he thought, until he glanced around him. Suddenly, it all started rushing back. Somehow, his spirit had left his body, but wasn't teleported to the other world. For some reason, he was still here. But why? For what purpose? Yamoshi studied his race for many years, decades, centuries, until time itself became an irrelevant concept to him. He watched as the Saiyans fought, won, and lost many wars. He watched the rise and fall of many Saiyan leaders and witnessed the rise to power of a tyrant alien named Frieza. When Saiyans began regularly traveling to other worlds to conquer them, Yamoshi visited some of these worlds. This is where he learned that there were beings in the universe that were more spiritual than the typical Saiyan. And so, even in the form of a spirit, he could communicate with some of these beings, faintly, but enough for them to understand his presence and intentions. One of these beings was a Namikian who called himself the Elder Guru. Yamoshi told his story to the Elder Guru, who empathized and decided to record their conversation in the Namikian Book of Legends. In return for his story, Elder Guru told Yamoshi more about the deities in their universe. The Kais, the god of destruction, Beerus, and his angel, Whis. Yamoshi pondered this information for many decades as he monitored the Saiyan race. He saw glimpses and stood witness to the lives of many interesting Saiyans. One in particular was a Saiyan not too different from himself. His name was Bardock. Bardock had a righteous heart and attempted to lead the Saiyans in a revolt against Frieza, but he was unsuccessful. Yamoshi watched as the Saiyan race was almost completely wiped out by Frieza. By chance, Bardock's son managed to escape. An infant Saiyan launched to a planet where he was one day expected to grow up and conquer. Maybe it was because of his lack of influence from other members of the Saiyan race. Or maybe the Saiyan just bumped his head as a child. Either way, Yamoshi noticed uncanny similarities between the Saiyan and himself. A Saiyan with a righteous heart. A Saiyan who valued peace, life, and love. His name was Kakarot, but his friends on his new planet called him Goku. It didn't take long for Yamoshi to realize Goku was special. Battle after battle, Goku proved himself to be the most unique Saiyan Yamoshi had observed over his centuries of wandering. Goku even managed to defeat Frieza and was the first in a thousand years to achieve the Super Saiyan form again. Goku gave Yamoshi hope. This is it, he thought. This is the reason why I'm still here to witness the recreation and ascension of the Saiyan race, to finish the goal that my comrades and I gave our lives for. Yamoshi recognized that Goku was the Saiyan to finally make his dream a reality. But even with his immense key, Super Saiyan power alone wasn't enough. Yamoshi remembered his theory about Super Saiyan God. Maybe it's Goku. Maybe Goku is the one to unlock powers to rival the gods themselves. But in order to do that, he will need to be in the presence of Divine Ki. Yamoshi pondered how he can introduce Goku to Divine Ki, and then it struck him. One of the things he learned from the Elder Namikian was that Beerus was a god of destruction who enjoyed the thrill of battle as much as the Saiyans did. Not only that, Beerus was a god of destruction who enjoyed sleeping for decades, sometimes centuries at a time. And this was convenient for Yamoshi because living beings were always closer to the spirit world and easier to communicate with while they were asleep. So Yamoshi appeared in a dream of the God of Destruction. He appeared in the dream of Beerus the Destroyer himself. His goal was to show Beerus the power of a Super Saiyan God and entice him into believing that a Super Saiyan God would be a rival that allowed him to experience the thrill of battle once again. Luckily, Yamoshi's plan worked. Beerus awoke, and for some reason, his mind was captivated with the thought of seeking out the Super Saiyan God. Yamoshi was concerned about how he could best convey the message of transforming into a Super Saiyan God to Goku. But luckily, the information that his friend, the Elder Namikian, wrote in the Namikian Book of Legends was revealed by Shenron, the Dragon of Earth. While in the presence of Divine Ki, Goku and five other righteous Saiyans were able to properly perform the ritual 
to allow Goku to become the first Saiyan ever to reach Super Saiyan God. Yamoshi watched as one of his dreams became reality. It was beyond anything he had ever expected. Here stood a Saiyan with divine key, a Saiyan who was also a god. Yamoshi was even more impressed to watch Goku fight on par with Beerus, but it was too much. At one point in the fight with the God of Destruction, Goku's body gave out. He was ready to give up, and in that moment, Yamoshi realized he could speak with Goku. Don't give up, he said. Keep on pushing even higher. The fight with Goku and the God of Destruction ended, and although Goku was not able to defeat Beerus, Beerus was so impressed with Goku's power that he not only spared the earth, but he also allowed his angel, Whis, to train Goku to become even stronger. While monitoring Goku, Yamoshi learned some incredible news. Although the Saiyans from Universe 7 were almost wiped out, there existed Saiyans in another universe, Saiyans with righteous hearts. Is this where his dream and what he died for will be fully realized in this new place? this new universe on this new planet, this planet Sadala? If you made it this far in the video, hashtag OG Yamoshi in the comments below. All of the illustrations in this video were taken from my book, Yamoshi, the legendary Super Saiyan. There are illustrations in there that weren't included in the video. A big thank you to everyone who's already grabbed a copy of the book. All the positive feedback on the book is a bit overwhelming and it means a lot, so thank you. If you haven't already gotten your copy, there is an Amazon link in the description of this video for you to do so. As promised, I also included a link to some of my favorite illustrations from the video that you can use for wallpapers, screensavers, whatever you like. A lot of time, effort, and yes, money went into creating these images, so I hope you guys enjoy them. Anyway guys, that's it for me. Let me know what you think of the video. I want you guys to do me a final favor. Have a great day today. Hashtag Crew. I will be talking to you again real soon. Bye.